Tri-Cities Community Television was at the Port Coquitlam Community Arts Village in Lee Square for the opening of their latest free art exhibition. These free art exhibitions showcase many regional, talented, and emerging artists over the calendar year. This exhibit was titled Striations and Segmentation by artists Karen Holland and Alice Rich. Tri-Cities Community Television had a chance to sit down with both artists to get some insights into their latest work. The event was hosted by the Friends of Lee Square. I think what I hope comes through in my work is a sense of a real seeking for understanding and awareness. I think that uh, William Blake's comments about our kind of getting in our own way of our own imagination and letting too many things, whether it be restrictions or uh, kind of our own um, small-mindedness maybe getting in the way of being the rich people we can be. And so for me in my work, I, I'm looking for that sense of inspiration, for whether it's coming from the natural world or from interactions with people. And in my sculpture too, I think there's that sense of, of looking for deeper meanings and layers of understanding. And the title of this uh, particular show, uh, Segments and Striations, looks into that because when we look at the world around us too, not just the people but the actual physical world around us, there's so many layers of history and awareness of what we're doing to our planet, but also um, the, the things that we can get from nature, that sense of inspiration, and for me, I guess it's, it's seeing that there's more than just the surface, there's something behind that that I hope people see. Because I've tried to shift my color palette and I always come back to the blue-orange uh, complementary range. Sometimes it shifts a little more into the red or you know into the cooler blues, but typically in there, and I don't, I can't really answer that question as to why that is. I've, I've, I just don't feel inspired shifting anywhere else, and so I always seem to come back to that. Sometimes in more muted tones, like more uh, subdued tones. I tend to think we live in a very gray world or a beige world, and. I you know here, of course, it's very green outside, but our walls inside are so often beige, and I, I feel the need for uh, brightness, I think, in, and on the canvas, I think that's uh, what comes through. I, sometimes it's just intensity of emotion and, and deeper, richer colors. Sometimes the brightness is um, more joyful. One of my brothers said to me of my work, I think it's the, the one right behind me, he said when I showed it to him, we, I sent him um, pictures in my, uh, on my iPhone, and he said it made him happy, and I guess that's really what is a a real thrust for me in this new year, I think, of trying to lay aside maybe some of the deeper emotions I've been exploring and trying to, uh, I guess, seek maybe a more hopeful stance and, and uh, maybe a little more uh, joy on the canvas. And I think it shows in, in the work. Well, this artwork is part of my segmented vision series where I'm using um, hard edges in a painterly way to create man-made form. And the idea is to, to look at our landscape with the interruptions that we have in it now. And our vision has become segmented by architectural form, buildings, um, high-rises, various, various elements. So I've been playing with this concept for many years. Um, and this is, the, this is the next stage of that. Uh, the, the interrupted vision and these um, elements are reflecting within the landscape as well as interrupting the landscape. So in each of the paintings you see a different shape that would show you some of those forms. So I keep playing with segmenting the landscape. And now with these, I'm using vertical forms and in the one behind me. Um, that's very much a, a painterly impression of, of <clears throat> lifestyles and gardens going across English Bay and then up the North Shore Mountains. So that you're thinking about the development going up the mountain into the watershed. So in a way, I'm making a strong statement in a very, very beautiful painterly way but we are interrupting uh, much of our vision with, with man-made form.
I paint um, mostly in acrylic, although I've started to paint in oil, and I'm really enjoying that. Um, and often I just allow myself the freedom to paint and be, be chaotic with, with the paint. And that's normally how I start. Is it's the process of um, choosing the palette that gets me excited, and I, I paint, and the the it becomes kind of painterly but energetic. And then I pull that together and create some order out of it, hopefully. And. Um, as I refine it, it becomes more and more orderly. And I, I paint with a lot of layers. So what happens is my underpaintings and the, the color and the chaos brings a layer and an element through um, the light. Because I use clear mediums, it allows the light to penetrate through to the layers below. So a lot of the colors overlap and you can notice them on the surface. Well, I'm hoping that they think about about painting, about art. You know, it's not it's not just necessarily what's the imagery trying to say, but it's about the texture and it's about color and it's just about opening to the possibility of abstraction, thinking about something that isn't as clear as it could be. You know, if it, it's super easy, why would you create a painting? You could take the photograph to give give the story. And so I always withhold you know, a fair amount of information so that the viewer can participate, jump in there, and, and actually think about it and look and question. And in doing that, maybe they will go home with an idea of man-made forms that are interrupting our landscape and you know, what's behind those, what's next to them, how, how much are we filling in of that landscape how is that affecting the rest of our world? So they may not think about all those things, but they might be driving along one day and actually see a sky that looks like mine with an uh, element of a man-made form that is also reflected there. <laughs>